أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Let me repeat it and then I'll do the next steps. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Okay, let's take a look at what this can actually empower you with, and then we'll go into the details of this, you know, pronunciation. So this is about safety, right? So when you drive a car, you know, we take our seat belts first and foremost. So safety first. So this is you are saying that I seek refuge, I seek protection in Allah from the accursed shaitan or the Satan. Okay, so this has a lot of um, uh, empowering meanings for us. So if number one, to remember that look. You know, there is a competition. There is someone out there that, you know, that wants us to fail in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to, you know, not get close to Allah and to disobey Allah. And, you know, if you know the story of our father, Adam, this is the person, Satan, who kind of betrayed them, who lied to them, uh, who plotted against them and kept telling them something that was false and a lie that, okay, if you eat from the tree that Allah has prohibited that Allah has forbidden then you will become like angels or you will live forever and you will have a kingdom that will not perish that was a lie so similarly he puts a lot of different lies and promises to us that oh you have a lot of time you can fix yourself when you grow older you know just try it once just you know just don't do the right thing today you can fix yourself tomorrow or what if you do that you know if you fall Islam or if you pause to pray you would lose out on business or you would lose out on this opportunity people will think you are not cool all the these things that are false and lies that he does so remembering about that you know being cautious about it and always keeping your guards up so he can't you know take you away and one of the ways to do that is to ask Allah for help which is divine assistance so when you're feeling lazy you're feeling anger anger you know the first and foremost easiest thing to do is to remember and being cautious about Allah to take away that feeling of laziness or that feeling of you know, anger, uh, that feeling of, feeling of lack of discipline, um, or, you know, uh, to take that away from you and to give you the courage and the strength to do the right thing. So remembering this like divine assistance, which we call the concept of dua in Arabic, which is supplication, is to ask Allah for something that you need. And that could be something, you know, like Allah, you know, help me to earn more money and to use it for good things. Allah help me to find a righteous spouse. Allah help me to, you know, have a great job, business, find leads, clients, you know, have give me health, give me strength. Whatever it is, always, always asking Allah is a very important thing. And that itself, when we ask Allah, okay, it does not go in vain. Anytime you ask Allah, you get something out of it. So remember, like, you know, if you were to ask a very generous person, he or she would give you something. Now, Allah is the most generous. How can it be that Allah will not give you something? Now, it may not be visible right away. It may not manifest right away. But if you have the trust, remember that Allah will always give you something because you asked Allah. It could take a whole bunch of different forms. You may not realize it. It could be delayed. And there are all details about it. But the key thing is always ask Allah. Even if it's a small thing, a big thing, something related to this world or something related to the hereafter. Okay, now let's go into the details of the uh, pronunciation. So the first thing is, uh, okay, it's a simple thing. Uh, okay, now if I wanted to be longer, I would have added more A. So it would be like, uh, but this is simple. Uh. Now the next thing here, you can see I'm using apostrophe to denote a new letter that does not exist in Arabic language. So, so you know when I say, ah, uh, it's kind of coming clear from my throat. So if I want to say something a bit different, you know, think about it as if it's coming from the middle of the throat. And I'm saying, oh, oh. So instead of me, if it was, if I had AU, it would be like, oh, right? But I'm saying, oh. So it's kind of like, you know, again, try to differentiate that as much as you can. And it's coming from the middle of the throat. Uh, the one after that is, so this is another letter in Arabic that I'm combining or representing with TH. It's like this, who. Vu, vu. So au uh, vu. Okay. After that is very simple. Bil lahi. So remember, recall I have two A's to show you that you know I'm stretching it more. Lahi. So what we have so far is au vu billahi. Okay. Straightforward. Me. Then you have nash. Then you have shay. Okay. So me nash shay. 
Okay, here I have uppercase T to denote, you know, heaviness. Ta, ta, nir. Okay, I have uppercase R to denote heaviness, which is rajim. So all together, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Or you can break it down as well and, you know, uh, improve on that. Once again, remember that it's not about your accent. It's not about the perfection um, of your uh, pronunciation when you're praying. So you could be pronouncing it, you know, really bad from an Arabic perspective, but your prayer can be way better than an Arab. Why? Because it's about your sincerity. It's about your presence of heart. It's about your presence of focus. And at the same time, you making an effort to become better at it. Okay, so it's not about, you know, getting it right and your, your mind is not present and your focus is not present. So, um, so do that. Uh, one quick thing I want to mention about, you know, seeking help from Allah, you know, it's not like a human relationship that we say, oh, you know, I don't want to keep asking about it. Rather, when you ask Allah, it shows that you have faith in Allah, you have belief in Allah, you know that Allah is able to help you and Allah is listening and Allah is most merciful, most generous and so on and so forth. So it's not like a human uh, being that, you know, when you ask Allah, uh, oh, you should not think that, you know, how come I keep going and asking Allah? And, or I haven't done anything for Allah. I haven't prayed. I'm doing all these things. Should I still ask Allah? Yes. You know, it's not a trade. It's not a deal. You know, you can't help Allah. But by you asking Allah will actually help you increase your love, your trust, and your connection with Allah. So until next time, Asalaamu Alaikum.